this processing uh, software. And I decided to sort of give it a whirl and basically taught it to myself through um, watching YouTube videos on mute <laughs> with the subtitles and having that going and part of my screen and then having my processing window on the other part of my screen and, and sort of going back and forth uh, and just learning it that way. And it's been really fun. And it, it, the thing I really like about it is because I'm, I'm also sort of new to text coding um, and because I also think very visually, like I'm a visual learner, it really helps me to write some code and then execute it and then see a shape. You know, a lot of times when you do coding, you're building a program that's supposed to do something, but you can't see the program, you know, with processing, the code that you write is, uh, is realized visually. So you can actually see if I move this thing, if I change this value, it makes this thing move. Or if I change this, this value makes the color change or stuff like that. So I really like it to, as a way to, um, teach myself about, uh, about just sort of coding in general. Um, so the way that this is gonna work uh, is I'm gonna share my screen with you. I'm gonna uh, build um, and processing. Uh, the unit is called a sketch. So I'm gonna build a sketch and walk you through that. Um, if you wanna ask questions, you can either unmute yourself and ask me a question. Um, you can also pop into the chat. I'll, keep an eye on that too. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. I hope everyone is downloaded processing. Um, the link is in the chat, or if you, if you don't see it, it's processing.org slash download. Um, let me share my screen here. Okay, so that's working, I think. Um, here's the processing website. This, uh, this guy here, his name's Daniel Schiffman. Uh, he teaches at NYU and he has a series on YouTube called Coding Train, which is all about processing and it's phenomenal. And he's, he's an awesome teacher, explains things uh, really, really well. And I learned sort of everything that I know through him. So I'm gonna open up processing. I got a new sketch here and if you've ever done text coding, this will look uh, sort of familiar to you. Um, the only thing that's a little bit different is that we have our run and stop buttons up here, um, which might be a little bit, a little bit different. So the first thing we need to do, um, sorry, I have a cat and I can hear my cat on the counter where he's not supposed to be, but I'm not gonna deal with that. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, make a little setup. So um, this is going to be our text or our, our, our loop of code that's going to set the basic parameters for our sketch. So uh, the first thing we're going to initialize is the size that we're going to be working with, the size of the canvas that we're going to be working with. And we're going to call this um, uh, 600 by 600. Um, and so that's 600 pixels uh, wide by 600 pixels tall. Um, so if we just run this, then our sketch comes up and it's just exactly what we told it it's gonna be. It's 600 pixels wide, 600 pixels uh, uh, tall. Now, um, this class or this workshop is about geometric art uh, so art that's based in geometry. And the big thing you need to know about geometry in processing is that for our X and Y axes, zero, zero is up here in the top left. So if we tell something to go to zero, zero, you might think, okay, naturally, like here's, you know, a graph paper, here's X and Y. You might think zero, zero is in the middle and this is positive and negative, but it's not zero, zero, is right there in the top left. So um, if we want to, or yeah, to show you this, I'm gonna make another loop. This is our draw loop. This is the loop that uh, we write our code in that we want to be drawn onto the screen. Um, so if I make a point, and I'm gonna make a point at 100 comma 100, and that's gonna draw a point 
100 pixels in and 100 pixels down. So if I run that, you can see it. And if your screen is dirty like mine, you might not be able to really recognize it, but it's this little tiny dot right there, little tiny dot. So uh, we can change that to make it just a little bit easier to see. So we do that with uh, a command called stroke weight, which will change the weight of the stroke. And if we change that to 10, then we add a semicolon at the end. If we do that, then we can see it a little bit easier. Okay, so again, here's zero, zero. We went over 100, then we went down 100 and put a point there. Okay, is that, that good so far? Everyone, everyone's clear on that? Um, great. So let's uh, make another shape. Uh, we're going to make a rectangle, and that's abbreviated with rect. So that's, uh, we're going to put it same spot, 100, 100. And then um, I'm going to put, uh, so rectangle, we need two points. We need basically the top left corner and the bottom right corner. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the, our top left corner is going to be at 100, 100. For the bottom right corner, I'm going to put 100, 100 as well. Um, and <clears throat> I'm doing this to illustrate a point. Uh, no pun intended, I guess. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the first uh, corner, the top left corner, is going to be at 100, 100. The other corner I said is going to be at 100, 100 as well. But that's, you might think that they're going to be the same point, <clears throat> but they're really not. What's going to happen is it's going to place the first point at 100, 100. And then the second point, it's going to count over 100. And then it's going to count down 100. So this one sets the location. And then this one sets the width. And then this one sets the height. So if I run this, then we have a square, starts at 100, 100, the top left corner, and then the bottom right corner is 100 over, and then 100 down. Okay, does that, uh, does that make sense? This is just sort of like some basic stuff just to get everyone uh, sort of feeling good about this. So, okay, no questions in the chat yet? Cool. Okay, um, so I'm going to take away this stuff because that was just sort of for demonstration. Um, let's uh, let's do this. Let's change the background. Um, so this is a good way to sort of illustrate how color works in processing. So uh, if I say background is zero, then when I run this, background is going to be all black. Um, Maybe that chat thing is going to be annoying. Uh, background is going to be all black. But then if I do 255, then the background is going to be all white. OK? So color, uh, in, in, in the way that we're going to use processing today, color goes from 0 to 255. OK? Um, that's, that's the range for its values. So if I have something like 100, that's going to be sort of right in the middle. And that'll give me sort of a nice uh, slate gray. Um, now, I said that this only gets run ran once. So this gets run, uh, this runs at the beginning once. And then this loop, the draw loop, runs over and over and over again. OK, so if I do, um, let's see, how do I want to illustrate this? That's a great way. To, oh, actually, before I talk about that, so in the background, uh, I was using one value from 0 to 255. And that was controlling the black to white. Uh, but if I do three values, um, let's make this one uh, 0, then let's make this one 100. And then you put commas in between. So if you'll notice, processing does a really good job of letting you know when you've made an error. Um, it gives you this red squiggly line, and it says that there's something wrong here. It doesn't exactly tell you what's wrong. Like, this says syntax error on 100, delete this. Um, 
but it's basically calling your attention to the fact that like there is something wrong with your code. So if you see that those that red squiggle, just sort of look around it. And most of the time you just sort of forgot a comma or a parenthesis or a semicolon or something like that. Okay, so this background now we have it set for 100, 0, 100. Um, and if we run that, we'll get this nice purple. That's because uh, for this, when you have three values, uh, the first one is your R value, your red, and that's your green, your second one, and then your third one is your blue value. Okay, so, um, so far I've been telling the computer what to do, um, but I want the computer to make some choices. That's what processing is all about. Uh, it's all about uh, the computer, you telling the computer a range of possibilities and then the computer executing that range. So I'm gonna make, uh, a, I'm gonna initialize a variable uh, and it's gonna be a floating point number. So that means it's gonna have the ability to have a decimal and I'm gonna call that R, okay? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say R equals, because I'm gonna set, um, set R as something, and I'm gonna say random 255. So now what's gonna happen is when the program starts, when we, when we run our sketch, it's gonna say, okay, I need to hold a bit of memory for this value, this floating point value that's called R. And then when it runs the setup, it's gonna say, okay, that value R that I created, I'm gonna assign that a random number between zero and 255, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass that value into here. So now when we run this, I don't know exactly what this R value is gonna be. I know it's gonna be somewhere between zero and 255, but the computer is gonna choose. So when we run our sketch, Every time we run it, we're gonna get a different shade of this sort of purpley color. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, now, what I wanna do is I wanna show you that because this block of code, this R random and the background stuff is up in the setup, it only runs once. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the draw loop. So that means that every time this loop runs, uh, sorry, every time this loop runs, it's gonna choose a new R value, or sorry, it's gonna choose a new value for R, then it's gonna pass that into the background, okay? So um, I'm actually, uh, yeah, the, uh, one thing about processing is that uh, processing doesn't care about aesthetics. It's like the program doesn't care about aesthetics, and so sometimes uh, you'll put in values and it'll be really bright and flashy. Um, and sometimes it's hard to look at. Uh, and I, this, this isn't gonna be that difficult to look at, but just sort of be aware of that. It's like, um, uh, yeah, it, it sometimes can get a little bit blinding. Um, so if you are susceptible to things like that, just uh, be cautious in the values that you pass through it. Cause there's been some times where it's just started flashing at me and I'm like, oh God. and I have to just stop it really quickly and, and keep going. Okay, so that was a diversion or diversion. Uh, what's gonna happen when I run this, every time we run through this draw loop, it's gonna choose a new value for R and it's gonna pass that into the background and we're gonna get sort of a flashy um, color. Okay, so again, just really sort of basic stuff to, to, to help you understand that the setup loop runs once, the draw loop runs over and over and over again continuously. Okay, uh, we've made one box, let's make a bunch more. So, uh, actually, I'm gonna uh, delete this and I'm gonna set the background because I don't want the background to be flashing constantly. I'm gonna set the background to 100. Okay. <clears throat> We've made one box, let's make a whole bunch of boxes. Um, and to do that, we're gonna make um, a for loop. Now, uh, uh, a for loop is, 
is a, is a block of code that's going to run uh, uh, a, a certain number of times and generate uh, a specific uh, thing that we that we tell it to. A little bit vague, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So, um, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say for then uh, this like this line of code. Um, like if anyone was going to get a processing like a line of code from processing tattooed somewhere on their body, like this would be the line because it's something that like as a processing programmer you just type it all the time you type it constantly and it's it's super useful and it's super good but it's sort of like the the like secret handshake for processing users um so what this is i'm going to try to explain it as best as i can we're going to make this loop and the first thing we need to do is is initialize a variable so we're going to say int i what that means uh, is that this integer that we're going to call i is going to start out at zero. Then we're going to say while i is less than or equal to some value, we're going to call that value 10 for right now. So while it's less than or equal to i, uh, or, sorry, less than or equal to 10, this loop is going to run and we're going to increment i each time we go through this loop. So I plus plus, okay? Then I need to put some curly brackets because this is a, a new loop. And so curly brackets, then a closing curly bracket there at the end of it. So if I run this, this is gonna make 10 rectangles. Okay, if I run it, cool. The problem is that all 10 of these rectangles are all on top of each other, okay? Because they all have these same uh, the, these same coordinates. So, what we can do, because uh, we talked about, um, well, we already talked about some random stuff. We're not going to do. I want to. There, there's a there's a sketch I want to make, and so I'm going to show you how to make that. I was going to change it a little bit, but I'm not going to. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, first uh, make. 10 rectangles that go all the way across the, the top uh, of the sketch. So um, to make this just a little bit easier, I'm going to initialize another variable uh, that's going to be an int. And it's going to be called num boxes. So that's going to stand for the number of boxes that we want to have in our, in our sketch. So this number of boxes is going to be our maximum down here for our loop. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, so we want the X value for each of the boxes to be different and to be uh, equally spaced across the top uh, of the sketch. So I'm going to make another variable called X. Um, actually, I'm just going to sort of put those together so we can save some space. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x equals, then I'm going to use this function called map. Now, map is a super handy function that takes uh, a variable uh, as its input, and then with that variable, you say the range that, that, uh, that the, the variable's numbers are going to be within. And then you say the range that you want them to be in. So it's basically taking in information and then scaling it to a specific uh, amount. And you can sort of set those bounds, uh, both of the, the numbers that are coming in and also the numbers that, that, wanna, that you want to uh, output. Okay, check the chat, chat's good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this I value, because we're creating this I value, and we're gonna say I, and we're gonna say it starts at zero and the maximum that it's going to go up to is num boxes. Okay, and then the, uh, so that's the input that we're going to get for our i. Then the output is going to be, uh, we want it to go across the top of our sketch. So we're going to say that's going to start at zero because this is our, our x axis. So zero, and then this is uh, sort of cool. The, the end of it, we're going to call width. Okay, so when we 
declared our size up here. Uh, processing automatically calls this width, and then they automatically call that height. Okay, so anytime we type width, it automatically refers back to this. And if we change this to 300, then it'll update this value to 300. Okay, so width is super, super handy. Then what we're going to do, so we have our x value. This is going to give us a different x value for each, uh, each time through this loop. Then we're going to pass that x value there. Uh, and now if we run this, we should have 10 boxes uh, across our screen. Oops. What happened here? Map 000, 000 600 called, which returns not a number. Map. Did you name, did you assign num boxes? Do you need to assign oh. that to a number? Yeah. There we go. Okay, we're going to have 10 of them. Thank you. So now we have our boxes up here and they're all pushed up against each other. Um, uh, do you see these lines here? Those are called the strokes. Um, and so what we can do uh, is we can say no stroke, which I, uh, it comes in handy. And then there we sort of have this band. Uh, these boxes are all sort of pushed together uh, next to each other and they, they make sort of a solid band. Um, and so what we can do, uh, we have this float R and I kept this up here for a reason because we're gonna use that again. And we're gonna say R, and we're actually gonna basically just copy this. But instead of X, we're gonna say R, I, which we're getting from up here, zero, num boxes. And then we're gonna say instead of zero to width, we're gonna say zero to 255. And then we have an R value that's gonna go from zero to 255. You can probably guess this is gonna uh, uh, work with color for each box. So we're gonna say fill uh, R, because that's our first value is red. And then for our G and B, you can just sort of make up some things, just put whatever you feel like. And then when we run this, this will give us sort of just a nice gradient where each box has a different R value based on its location. So that's pretty cool. Or the, the not its location, but uh, based on when it was made through the course of the loop. So the first one over here, I equals zero, that's what we're starting with. It has no red, right? And then as we get uh, through the loop, each time through the loop, we get more and more red. And then we end up with red being 255 over there at the end. Okay, um, I'm going to pause here just for a second and see if there's any questions so far. See how everyone's doing? Everyone good? Okay, cool. Um, here's the thing though, if we run this again, we see that these aren't really squares, they're actually rectangles and they're overlapping each other. So um, what I want to do is I want to make them uh, so that they uh, fit together nicely and don't overlap. Um, so we just have to do just a little bit of math. Or actually, we don't have to do math. We have to tell processing to do a little bit of math. So we're going to make a new, uh, a couple new variables called um, uh, W for width and h for height and these are going to be width and height for our our boxes and so uh width is going to be uh the width of the screen divided by the number of boxes and then our height is going to be as you can probably guess height divided by num boxes And then all that we're going to do is just pass that, uh, it's not x, width and height the value down to here. Now, if we run this, so now they're all squares and they don't overlap. They're all just pushed up right next to each other. Okay. Um, so cool. We've made uh, a strip. Now let's make 
a grid. So uh, you, you, you might think, oh, well, all we need to do is just like copy this and put this whole big chunk of code down here and just like change this to um, 100 plus H. And then like, then there we go. Then we get another line of our grid, right? No, that's gonna be, be a big mess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make uh, a loop within this loop. So uh, a lot of, especially uh, art that's based on geometry or sort of um, uh, sort of iterative art making like this, there's a lot of loops within loops within loops within loops within loops. So I said at the beginning that this draw, this void draw function is a loop. It just keeps running. And within that loop, we have a loop already. This, uh, this int i equals zero loop. So all we want to do is just build another loop inside of that. So that means that uh, like every time this runs, this runs 10 times, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put another loop here for, and we're gonna basically type the same thing, but we're gonna change our variable, j equals zero, oops. So j is less than or equal to num boxes, and then j plus plus, okay? So again, for maybe those of you who weren't here when we made the first loop, um, this, initiates an integer called j, and it sets it at the beginning to zero. And then uh, it says to, it's gonna run this loop while j is less than or equal to the value of num boxes, and num boxes is up here at, at 10. And then every time we run this loop, we're gonna increment j by one, okay? So, <clears throat> We did that, we made a new curly bracket at the end of this. And if you see down here, there's uh, a little red squiggly line, which is telling us that we need to do something. And it says missing right curly bracket. Okay, every time you make an open curly bracket, you need to make a closing curly bracket for that. So, and what's handy uh, is that processing, whenever you put your cursor by a curly bracket, it shows you the corresponding uh, curly bracket. So if I put it here, the next is closing one, it shows me the open one. Same thing with that one. And if I put it near this uh, open one, it shows me its corresponding closing one. Okay. So we're making these J values and we need to put them somewhere. So we have X, so let's do float Y. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically copy this and we're gonna say y equals, and instead of i, we're gonna say j, and uh, zero, and instead of, um, you know, x is width, x is our, the x-axis is width, the y-axis is height. Um, so we're gonna take that, and then we're gonna plug it in to our rectangle down there. So now the start of our rectangle the X and the Y is being set up here and then it's being passed into here. Now, let's run this and see what happens. Cool, so now we have these columns of colors. They're all, uh, the column is all the same color, okay? But within each one of these columns, we have 10 discrete boxes, okay? So, Let's, uh, let's make this just a little bit more interesting. We're gonna make another float called B. And, you know, you can see where I put it. And I put it next to the R. Uh, so you can probably guess that it's gonna have something to do with uh, that R. So we're gonna copy that R line of code. We're gonna call that B. And now we're gonna map J. Okay, before, when we were doing our, our red value, we were mapping J, uh, we were mapping I from one. Uh, sorry, let me just check the chat just to make sure people are doing. Oh, cool, thank you. I just dropped my code in just in case someone's behind, yeah. All right, thanks. Um, so, uh, 
so we're, we're working on our, our B value. Let's see. Oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, actually, I'm just going to keep that up so we, I can see it and so I don't have to. Uh, okay. So we have our B value. We're setting our B value. We're using the J from up here to set it. And that's going to go from zero to num boxes. And then we're going to map that from zero to 255 as well. And then we're going to take this B and we're going to pass it into our fill right there. And now when we run this, we should have a pretty cool gradient. Whoa. <laughs> Um, so, and what we can, what we can do, of course, you know, these are just values. We can play with them. Uh, I'm going to change that instead of from zero to 255, I'm going to change it from 255 to zero. So now we get sort of different gradients. Um, and we can maybe change this value that was a little bit dark for my taste. Oops. There we go. That's sort of a nice one. Um, and you know, of course, like uh, this, what I'm showing you is sort of just like basic functionality. Like the goal isn't for you to, to take this and be like, look, I can make a grid of different colors, but for you to take these concepts and say, oh, I know how to make a grid of objects. What objects do I want to put in that grid? Like, how do I want to change this and make this my own? And every time you open up a processing sketch, it's you just sort of start playing with values and playing with where those values are going. Um, and then you make mistakes and you make different things and things come out that you weren't expecting. Um, this this sketch that I'm showing you, I came up with last night, and there was a thing that I just made a mistake. I put a thing in the wrong spot and it sort of blew up in this really cool way. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. Um, so uh, the next thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to talk about like, so when I hit run, I get a thing and that thing is stationary and it's, it's just sort of sitting there. And while sitting there is cool, I want to animate it. So I'm going to, use a command called rotate. Um, and I'm going to, uh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to say rotate, I'm going to make a new variable actually in a second called row, because we already have an R. So I'm going to make a float row. And this row, um, if I set this row to, to, to zero, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to sit there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say every time we run through our draw loop, I want to increment row by just a tiny little amount. So I'm going to say row plus equals. That means that it takes that, that value of, of row and it adds that plus a little value back into itself. So every time it runs through this, it's going to get a little bit bigger. It's going to increment just a little bit more. So if I run this, that's really slow. But you can see that our whole thing is moving, but it's sort of tethered up here to the corner. Um, and if I make this a lot faster, you'll see that it'll just sort of like windmill around that corner, which can be cool um, and can be useful. And there's fun things you can do with that. Um, but what I want to do is I want to move zero zero from that corner i want to move it to um to the middle of our sketch so before i rotate i'm going to use another command uh, called translate and we're going to translate so to, to to the middle so we're going to say translate width divided by two and height divided by two so that's going to put it our zero zero right in the middle and when we run this now our thing will be right in the middle and we'll get that, which again, could be useful, could be cool, but not exactly what I wanna do. I don't like all this sort of dead negative space there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change, I wanna make our, our field a lot bigger. Um, with a processing window, you know, right now we're set it, we set it to 600, 600, um, but, and while it's there, I like that I'm sort of like 
half present. My arm sort of disappearing. But while it's while we can see that zero to six hundred, zero to six hundred, there is like an infinite amount of space above and below and left and right of our processing sketch that we can play with. Um, so here, where we set our x, instead of setting it to zero, I'm going to set it to negative width. So it'll go from negative 600 to positive 600. And then for here, for height, I'm going to set it from negative height to positive height. And now when I run this, our thing's in the middle and everything's rotating around it, but we still have this dead space and it's rotating a little bit. Um, so how do we fix that? Well, we need to think about the size of our box, right? You think about the size of our box. So here we set, uh, set it with width divided by number of boxes. So all we really need to do is we just need to multiply that by two and multiply that by two. Okay, so now the width of the boxes is gonna be twice as big and the height of the boxes is gonna be twice as big. So, okay, oh, there's my cat. Okay, so now when I run this, uh, sorry, I'm going to make this a little bit slower so that it's a little bit easier to see. So now when I run this, our whole screen, our whole sketch is taken up by these colored boxes that we've made, and they're filling everything and they're rotating um, there from the center. So it's pretty cool. Um, now, well, let's see. Oh, here's what I want to do. Uh, this is cool, but it's also like, again, you, you run it and it runs and it just sort of runs and it runs and like, that's cool, but it'd be great if we could interact with it, right? Everything's always much more fun when we can, uh, interact with it. So up here are num boxes. This has been a really like key, uh, key variable that we've been dealing with. I'm going to not set it to 10 up here. What I'm going to do in this draw loop at the very beginning, right after we draw our background, I'm going to say um, num boxes. Then I'm going to use this map function again uh, to map an incoming value from a range to a, a different range. And I'm going to use something called mouse x. Now, mouse x uh, tracks the X location of your mouse across the processing sketch and returns that uh, as a value to processing. So mouse X goes from zero to width and we're gonna scale that. Uh, we start out with 10 boxes. Let's go from two to a hundred. Okay, put a little semicolon after that. Oh, here's something. Uh, so I was about to hit run, but I noticed that all this was under a red squiggly thing and, and it needed my attention. So I looked down here, type mismatch. Float does not match with int. So what that means is when I declared num boxes, I declared it as an integer because I only wanted a whole number of, of boxes to deal with. I didn't want to have to deal with any, um, you know, 3.5 boxes or 7.29 boxes or anything like that. So uh, all I have to do is I just have to, uh, so, so that, that's an integer. That's gonna hold an integer, not a floating point number. Map, because it's a mathematical function that scales a value to a different range of values, that likes to return floats and it returns a float, uh, floating point number. So all I need to do is just wrap this in int, int, open parenthesis, and then at the end here, I just need to put another parenthesis there to, to encapsulate this whole thing. And again, just like how um, these curly brackets, when you put your mouse or put your cursor next to a curly bracket, it shows you the corresponding one. The same thing is true with a, a, a parenthesis. When you put your mouse next to this parenthesis, it shows you that that's its partner parenthesis, and this one is that one. So. It's a good way to sort of keep, keep track of everything. Okay, so now every time our draw loop runs, which is about 30 times a second, it's gonna ask the computer, where's the mouse? What's the X value for the mouse? 
and the mouse will say, I'm at 240. And it'll say, okay, 240 in the scale from zero to width, I'm gonna scale that to something between two and 100. And then I'm gonna report the closest integer to that. And then that's gonna be num boxes. And then that will be passed into all these different instances. This variable is so many different places. It's, it's sort of the one that's, that's in charge of a lot of this, uh, this stuff. So now when we run this, still spinning, but so my cursor's over here, basically at zero, zero. As I move across, we're gonna get more and more boxes, okay? Until we get 100 by 100. And what's interesting about this is that like, you know, when you get up to here, you can't see that. You can still see the sort of boundary points between the boxes, um, but the gradient isn't that different. But when you get sort of lower, then you get this, this really sort of pixelated gradient, um, which can be sort of interesting. Uh, so let's, we use our, our X for our mouse for that. Um, let's use our Y for something else. So another thing that we can control is we can control, we can control this, this speed of our rotation. So down here, our row has been set to zero, thank you, Jocelyn, set to 0 0.01. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map this uh, from mouse Y and it's going to go from zero to height because Y is our height access. Uh, and then I'm going to call this 0.0 because .0 I want it to be still uh, when it starts. And then from there to 0 0.1 so we can get a little bit of speed on it. So now if I run this, it starts out. My mouse, it hasn't tracked my mouse yet, so it defaults to 0, 0. Um, and so right now we have the minimum amount of boxes, which was two by two, and the minimum amount of rotation, which is zero. And as I move, I'm gonna be really careful when I do this. As I move this across the top, you can see we get more boxes. And then as I move it down, you can see that the rotation gets faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Okay, so again, this can be like, this can be pretty hypnotizing if you're, <laughs> if you look at it for long enough, it's sucked into the colors and the, and the, and the motion and everything. Um, so that's cool. Here's, uh, when I was making this last night, uh, I put something in the wrong spot and it sort of just went crazy. And it went crazy in such a cool way that I wanna share that with you now. Um, so, this rotation uh, is outside of these two loops. So this rotation is only happening uh, once every time the, the, the draw loop is run. Um, and so it says, here's the whole sketch, or here's the whole draw loop. I'm gonna do that, everything's gonna draw. Then every time I come back through the draw loop, I'm gonna turn it just a little bit. And everything's gonna move together just a little bit and just a little bit, just a little bit each time we run through it. Granted, this is happening really fast, so you get the, the illusion of motion, okay? But what happens if I start uh, taking this rotate command and saying, uh, every time you draw a row, then I want you to rotate the next row a little bit more and rotate the next row a little bit more and rotate the next row a little bit more. Um, and then, Conferring with my notes, then I'm gonna, uh, well, let's see what this happens. What happens when I run this? Oops. Hold on, let me get this to a better spot. Get more rows in there. And so um, you can see that each row, each row is rotating individually, right? because I moved that, that command to rotate to the beginning of, um, of our first loop, that means that it's gonna draw a row of boxes and then 
rotate and then draw the next row of boxes, then rotate and draw the next row of boxes, and rotate and draw the next row of boxes. So if we get this going, it, it can get a little bit um, psychedelic. <laughs> so use with your, uh, you know, use with caution. Um, if we get a bunch of boxes, then we can get really cool stuff like this, these sort of wild spirals. And so what's fun uh, or what's interesting is that each point where you put your mouse is going to have a different X and Y coordinate. And so the point is going to have a different result. So you get these like really generative sort of chaotic, uh, unique drawings just based on where you put your mouse. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and, and actually, uh, let's make this just a little bit. That's unique. awesome. It looks awesome. Brooks. Okay. So I love it. <laughs> let's make this just a little bit more fun. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm actually going to put a negative number here and I'm going to put a pretty small negative number there. And I'm going to put the same positive number there. Um, so when I run this now, uh, if I put my mouse directly in the middle of the of the y axis, it'll stop moving. But if I go up, then uh, it'll go backwards. And if I go down, then it'll go forwards. I don't like those values. Okay, let me try this now. There we go. So yeah, I'll make a lot of them. If I'm in the middle stop and if I go up it'll rotate one way and if I go down it'll rotate the other way so now we can control not only direction or not only speed but we can also control direction yeah so uh, Kevin asks a good question how can you use these animations are you able to apply them to a website uh, and Jocelyn's dropping the current code um, so what you can do, now um, there's a number of different ways you can, you can do this. Uh, there's sort of a, uh, uh, another programming language that's built by the, this, this, this code, what am I trying to say? This coding language processing was developed by this nonprofit organization. And they have another version of this, which is called p5.js, which does a lot of the same stuff that can be implemented directly into a website. Um, processing is really cool for standalone things. Um, it can take in information uh, through OSC messages and uh, communicate with other programs that way. Uh, so like if you're running Ableton, Ableton can send and receive OSC messages. So you can have your visuals be directly uh, reactive to your audio or be directly communicating with your audio and vice versa. So like I do a lot of music programming. And one thing that's sort of fun is to make a sketch like this and then have it, you know, keep track of where a, a value is and have that value sent from processing to Ableton and have that control the filter on a synthesizer or the amount of delay that a sound has or something like that. Um, so you can do that. You can also uh, save these, the, save the generated images uh, and combine those uh, to make like a, a video or a, uh, a GIF. Um, so there are ways to, to, to export what you make in processing because it is cool to make stuff in here, but yeah, after a little while you're like, okay, cool. So it makes a thing that I, what do I do with this? I, you know, re record with my, holding up my phone to my screen and then put it on Instagram. I don't know what I do, but there are ways you can, you can export it. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I just want to add that if if you do like making stuff, like if you're into Arduino or Raspberry Pi, um, you can make a lot of really amazing installations that use processing. Where if you were to do if when P5JS, it just like adds an extra layer of having to have internet connectivity. Although you can use it locally, but a lot of times for installation work, even at 
the Metropolitan Museum of Art, like we would use processing as like the back end to make really interesting visuals. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 great. And and you know, putting this onto a projector and projecting it is uh is super fun. Okay. One more thing I want to show you, um, because like when I when I run this and I move my mouse around, uh that's really bad, zero five. Uh Okay, there we go. That's a lot better. So uh, what would be cool is if we could reset this because like sort of, like every moment of it is, is interesting, but it's sort of cool to see it start and then really start to pull apart from itself. So we're gonna make another, uh, another thing down here, uh, void mouse clicked. And so what this does is this uh, reports anytime the mouse is clicked. Uh, so all that we're going to do is we're going to say, if this mouse is clicked, then I want you to do something, or if the mouse is clicked, then I want you to do something. And that thing that I want you to do is I want you to reset our rotation, our row to zero. Okay. Cause remember our row uh, variable is controlling the amount of rotation and we're incrementing it. Uh, every time we go through the loop, we're incrementing it. And so resetting it back to zero, will reset everything back to back to where they started. So now if I run this and I get something that's sort of chaotic, if I click my mouse, it starts over again. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then again, I can slow it down. It feels like we're falling into the vortex. Now we're coming back out of it. Okay, so anyways, um, that is the sketch that I wanted to, to share with you. Um, sorry, I'll close out of that so we don't uh, seize up or anything. Um, does anybody have any, we have about five minutes left. Does anybody have any questions or have any, um, any does this spark uh, any possibilities and, and, and how you might use it? Or do you have any questions on what it could do? Like this is just one tiny little possibility of what processing could do. You can feel free to unmute or drop into the chat. Okay, well, that's that's totally fine. Um, so I, I think we said this at the beginning, but I'm gonna reiterate it. Uh, we're gonna do these uh, processing workshops uh, every week. So this week we just did one and then we'll be back again next week. And then uh, our, our third and final week will be the week after that. Um, feel free to come by again. Uh, I'm gonna have another project that's gonna be built off some of these same sort of concepts, these sort of like uh, simple-ish geometry with some animation and some interactivity uh, sort of stuff. Um, and again, like, the goal of this isn't for you to uh, replicate these things exactly. The goal for you is to uh, take these concepts, these ideas of, you know, sort of iterative uh, uh, art making and, and interactivity and to take these and to sort of explode them in your own uh, practice and, and to develop them uh, on your own. Um, if you get the itch to do processing stuff or you want to learn more about it in between these. Um, keep an eye on the the collab and do create because they have some uh, some other processing and some other uh, uh, generative art making uh, workshops coming up this week. Um, and the only other non Duke plug that I'll give if I'm allowed is to uh, check out um, coding train by Daniel Schiffman. Uh, his his videos are great. They're super informative. Um, and you'll, if you watch those, you'll go, hmm, hmm, this reminds me of how Brooks was teaching. I wonder why that is. Hmm. <laughs> so, so check those out if you want and check out uh, things that Duke Creative is offering. Thanks so that much. That was awesome, Brooks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing that.